keep going up. Now we had 62 people was the highest the other night. Uh, there we go. But but that was pretty pretty close. Here we go. All right. So I am going to present my screen, you know, and right when I was finally getting proficient in Google Meets and presenting, um, we purchased uh, a district uh, subscription to Zoom. So for those of you that use Zoom um, or have used Zoom, there are a lot of advantages um, that we're just starting to find out more and more about um, and related to Zoom and breakout rooms and groups and just some of the more bells and whistles that uh, Google did not have. And so as a school, we're going to be transitioning primarily over to uh, Zoom here. So you'll be hearing more about that um, soon. All right. So with no further ado, buenas tardes. I'm so happy to have all of you here. I can't tell you uh, how excited I am um, to be welcoming our kids back into the building. Um, I've really, really missed the sound of laughter um, uh, from our children in the school and just so very, very pleased um, to be starting the school year, although this is very different um, than any year that any of us have ever experienced. Um, I want to give a shout out. Uh, this is our 25th year being a Spanish immersion school. We were one of the first in the state. And so, you know, why not? Uh, last year was my 20th year in St. Louis Park. We ended the year a little bit differently than we ever have. This is our 25th year as a Spanish immersion school, and we're starting up a little bit differently than we ever have, too. So, um, um, I, tonight, uh, the intention is not to talk at you. The intention is I'm going to do a real quick presentation, and then it'll be Q&A. Um, and um, I know that we have at least two staff members on the call um, who will, will also uh, be, be available to answer some questions. So with that, um, um, I just wanted to give you some context. Um, See, that's the other thing about Zoom is you can make it a co-host and so then other people, but that's a whole other story. All right, so um, back in uh, the beginning of June, the, um, the Minnesota Department of Education requested that all school districts in the state of Minnesota start working on three different plans. So at that point, we didn't know what, where we were going to be regarding coronavirus. We didn't have any idea um, uh, what, what things were going to look like, but they said, we really want you to work on three different plans. So as you've heard, you know, it's the in-person, if ever everyone is back, the hybrid and the distance learning plan. Um, and at the end of July, so July 23rd, um, emergency executive order 20-82, if anyone wants to Google it. Um, and I know that uh, it was all over, uh, all over the news, but um, it, it gave some framework um, and structure for making the decisions uh, about uh, when and how to bring uh, students back to school safely. Um, in, uh, and what part of what that includes is looking at the data from the previous two weeks. Um, the previous two weeks uh, of data, taking a look at local data, being Hennepin County data, as well as St. Louis Park data. And that data looked different than it does today. Um, and it will, it will, I have a reason to believe it will continue to shift. And so um, as a school district and as a school, we need to be nimble and moving between these three models at any given point during the year based on um, and, and where we're at uh, regarding uh, student health, um, and, or I mean county health. So um, across our E12 system, uh, E being early childhood, um, we uh, took a look at multiple different ways of doing things and made um, some recommendations to the school board at the beginning of August. Um, and so to start off the school year, um, all students will begin the school year in a distance learning format. The rationale behind that was being that we do have to be nimble and in the, um, in the plan for uh, hybrid, we're still going to have uh, a significant amount of time being distance learning. Um, and, and as well as at any given time, a, a cohort, a class or a school may have to quarantine. Um, we, we needed the, the possibility of uh, teaching the kids how to use um, how, how to use the, the tools that we were um, beginning to get some proficient at in, in the spring. I do want to say, though, that we called it distance learning in the spring, and I think a more accurate term would be emergency learning, 
um, because we hadn't trained staff uh, a whole lot in distance learning. Uh, we didn't have a lot of our systems in place and we trusted our educators who'd already built the relationships with their children to do what they felt was best within uh, some structures. So the, the model that, we're, that you'll be seeing and that we'll be talking about tonight looks a little bit different um, based on the feedback that our families uh, and community have given us as well as what our educators saw. Um, so at this point, the plan is for early childhood through second grade students to come back in person three weeks from this coming Monday, um, September 28th in a hybrid model. And then our students in grades three through 12 would come back the following week. Um, at the elementary level, we're going to be using a little bit different model than what some of our neighboring communities have done. Um, and in some school districts, what they've done is they've, um, uh, because we're all offering um, full-time distance learning for families, what they've done is they've pulled the students out of their local neighborhood school um, and put them in a hybrid or in an online school. Um, and then pulled all the students from the schools together and put them on this online school. For a variety of reasons in St. Louis Park, we, we, we felt like that wasn't the right model for us. And I will say as an immersion school also, um, that would have been extremely complicated because we wouldn't have, if we pulled everybody into one online school, we wouldn't have been able to offer it in Spanish. Um, and, and the other piece too is um, that had we have done a uh, distance learning only sections within our school, um, we would, with, the, with our current numbers, we would have a K-2 classroom and a 3-5 classroom. Um, and it would not have allowed for uh, flexibility for families because I still ha I have families daily who are asking if they can switch between the models because like, like, like the world around us, things are continuing to shift and people aren't quite sure what is best for their family. And so we really, really wanted to focus on building the core and the class list that, your, that our teachers created last spring um, for grades, current grades one through five. And so what we did was we rolled those forward um, and in any given class and looking at the numbers, we might have five, uh, I think one class has seven students in distance learning um, and like, uh, 18 students that would be in the hybrid model, but that continues to shift. Every day it's changing a little bit and we wanted to provide that flexibility for families. So um, you've likely seen this in communications and when we get to the hybrid model, um, the student primarily, there are some exceptions to this, um, which I'm not going to go into detail on that right now, but primarily if your last name ends with A through, Kel, A through K, and if you've chosen the hybrid model, um, students would be in person on Mondays and Tuesdays, and um, opposite end of the alphabet, L through Z, would be on uh, Thursdays and Fridays, and students um, in distance learning um, would, uh, would not be in person um, uh, on site, but they would have live instruction on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I'll explain Wednesdays in a moment. Uh, I think that maybe would be the next slide. So this was the sample schedule that we worked on this summer. And it was, uh, we probably didn't put sample large enough um, on there. Um, because uh, we we knew I, I as as a as a principal knew that we needed to flesh it out a little bit more, and we needed to get some feedback from our families based on the model, as well as our teachers really needed to lean in, and uh, because they're much smarter than I am, um, uh, to figure out what does that look like for us. So this was the model that we put forth. And because this is a PSI only presentation, I'm not really gonna spend any time on this because I have, the, I have the schedule that we are gonna be using, all right, on the next slide. But I was gonna talk about more in a hypothetical um, for, um, for the other three schools. Um, and so I'm gonna go here now. And this is the schedule that we'll be using across the board to start off the year in first through fifth grade. And I, I wanna walk through it for a second. Um, and um, let's see, Sarah says, I don't see the slides. Uh, Car, Kim, could you help uh, in the chat and, and help um, maybe? Um, so the, can I get a thumbs up from other people if you see the slides? 
Right. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Kamiko. Uh, um, you're, you're in front of me. Um, so what, school will start on East Coast time this year at 745. Um, I'm calling it East Coast time, not really East Coast time because uh, we, were, we weren't that far off from last year. Um, but at 745, we'll start our morning meeting five days a week. And at PSI, um, uh, at PSI, we will um, have on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we will ask students um, and families to be logged in at 8.15, 9.15, 10.15, 11.15. .15. So you might be wondering why the quarter hour, and I'm gonna explain that in a second, and how does this work? And I actually, based on the feedback that you guys had given us and based on what we believe is best for children, we actually think this is gonna work pretty slick. <laughs> All right, so, oop, okay, hey, see, but I, the host has to learn how to use technology. All right, so um, at 8.15, if, if it were me as a, I was previously taught third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade um, in, in immersion. So if it were me as a third grade teacher, right? I, I'm gonna start my day, we're gonna do our morning meeting and we're gonna go, I'd go right into, if I wanna call block one math, um, just call it math for the sake of discussion, right? So I'm gonna start my math lesson. Just like when, when our children are in front of us, we would never teach an hour long lesson. Right. Best practice for elementary school is always large group, guided practice, small group, then come back large group, guided practice, small group. That's what we're doing all day um, with your kids to try and give them um, what they need. And so what let for the sake of argument in third grade, we're going to do multiplication today. I'm going to introduce my lesson. Um, we're going to do some practice and then I'm going to tell uh, just as if, if we were in the classroom. I have four different activities for kids to work on, and it may they're not going to get through all four activities necessarily um, during the math class, just like they wouldn't um, when they were in school uh, or in the physical building. But I might say group A. Um, group A, what I want you to do is I want you to work on IXL. Group B, work on workbook page 37. Uh, group C, uh, uh, we're going to put you into a group to work on some um, word problems. And group D um, is going to stay here with me. Because just as when we were at school, um, in both distance learning and hybrid, the ask of all teachers is that each child be in a small group two to four times a week, at a minimum of two and up to four based on their needs. Okay, So that is going to happen. Um, uh, just as if we were at school. So as the classroom teacher, so we've got morning meeting, we go into math, we break up into our groups, and I tell the kids we're coming back at 9.15. In the meantime, I'm working on, uh, I, I'm working on, um, on a small group or working in a small group with kids. What I would do as the instructor and what many of our teachers have already talked about is coming back then at, the, at 9.15, and, and coming back and saying, all right, we're going to do a quick formative assessment. All right, I want you to put up your whiteboards and show me your, your answer to problem 37 or whatever, right? And at that moment, I, as the instructor, am going to make a decision. Does it look like the majority of kids got that? And if so, we're, we're going to move on to the next thing. If not, that allows me to be flexible and nimble and say, you know what, let's practice this for a few more minutes, right? And then I might go into the next topic, which... I, as a third grade teacher, have said, you know what, we're gonna, they study that Titanic in third grade. That's one of the things that they do. And so um, we're, gonna, uh, work, we're gonna read a little bit about the Titanic and uh, we're gonna do some comparing and contrasting. And um, then once again, large group, now we're gonna get into smaller groups and the teacher can, with Zoom, they can have them already prearranged and the teacher will be popping in and out of those groups. Um, and we're gonna have discussion um, and then from there, we're going to go back into, um, uh, we're going to go into small groups and everybody come back at 10, 15. Now we believe, um, that we can do it so that the tabs are already open because it's the same login every single time they log in, right? When we think we can, we're not hundred percent certain we're still working through it, but we believe that we can do that. Now, if kids were at school next week, if we were starting the year in person, Every year, what we work on 
is how do we sharpen our pencils? How do we get in line? How do we do, you know, how do we um, do some of those regular things in the classroom? What we're going to be working on with your, with your children is let's, we're going to log out and then we're going to log back in. We're going to show you all on your computer how to set a timer to come back. We're going to, you know, to help them with some of those logistical tools that we didn't know that we should have been teaching them last spring, right? So uh, we learned a lot. We heard from you. Um, and, and so then we're going to come back at 10, 15. Now, the reason why our schedule is going to look a little bit different than the IB schools um, is because we teach this thing called English in addition to Spanish, right? And what we realized last spring was we had the live times were primarily only the homeroom classroom and not our specialist classes or our English classes. And so for grades two through five who have English, what this flexibility of these 12 blocks allows us to do is it allows me working with the teachers to say, um, on, my, oops, see, uh, I don't know where this went. Uh, on Monday and, and went on Monday and Thursday, that when the kids show up at, in this 915 block, it's the English teacher who's teaching them and does the same thing. Large group, we're gonna work on this. I'm gonna pull a, a small group or two. Remember at 10.15, you have to be back for Senor Maslowski, okay? Um, so we're gonna be training the kids how to, how to do that, but it's only ever gonna be one login is our plan. Um, so that they don't have to, they or you don't have to remember now, are they going to English, where are they going? And then we're also working on a schedule that we're not gonna start immediately, but a schedule so that um, Senor Jok and, and Senor Watkins also have live time with each group of kids. Um, and, and, and to work with, with them. So that's what this schedule allows PSI to be able to do. Um, and what we heard from you is it needs to be consistent. And we also heard that we needed more live time across the board and more feedback loops is what education is what we call them, feedback loop, um, as well as we needed more opportunities and we needed consist more consistency across the building because some of you who had twin, uh, twins, um, that uh, you had different experiences with your kids in different classrooms. Some of you who had kids in first, third, and fifth last year had very different experiences based on the grade. And so what we're trying to do is provide a structure with, within which the teacher can be themselves and do what makes sense, but also so that you know what's going on on a daily basis. Then um, we'd have the closing circle, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And at that time, I, as the classroom teacher, am going to um, sign up or I'm going to bring everybody back together and say, you know, I'm really proud of you. You know, uh, today we worked on this skill related to um, uh, um, tenacity, right, um, or perseverance. Um, I'm so proud. Um, and this afternoon, this is what I want you to be working on. I want you to focus. Now, it's one thing for us to say that, and it's another thing for the students to do it. So it's also gonna be written in Seesaw, and that was another thing. Um, that was another thing that we found out um, was that um, we needed to give, we, we needed one system, right? Because we were primarily K3 Seesaw and primarily well, K2 CESA, primarily 3.5 Google Meet or uh, Google. We're doing K5 across the board. What does that allow us to do? It allows you to get familiar with one system. There are some bells and whistles. The teacher can still use Google within, um, within um, Seesaw, but it also allows for consistent communication for all of us, right? So what does that look like? It means that Chris Watkins, our FIAD teacher, can send out a message to the entire school and you don't have to look in six different places for it, right? It allows, so it allows us for much more nimbleness and flexibility. It would allow me or Senor Vandy Walker or, or anybody to send out a message through Seesaw without having to you. So you're not gonna be having to look in multiple places for, for that. And um, what, that, what this also allows us to do then is it allows uh, um, for us to have the asynchronous time. So Specialists and English are still going to have some asynchronous time in the afternoon, but we didn't want to pull kids out of um, the morning time as much as, as possible because we know that that live time is really important for instruction. And so 
we're not doing a lot of pullouts during this time um, in the morning. And so many of the, I think of social and emotional learning groups, many of our small groups, some of our special education groups, some of our um, other groups are gonna be in the afternoon. And the classroom teacher may also, depending on the day, have some groups in the afternoon. But the majority of live time is going to be in the morning and the afternoon is primarily gonna be a choose your own adventure based on this is, as a classroom teacher, this is what I want you to be working on. And so it's gonna be imperative, and we know this, it's gonna be super important for us as the educators to keep you in the loop on what's going on. I shared this, uh, we're recording this, so it's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story. I shared this with my wife, who um, our son did this, the emergency learning last spring, he's doing distance learning um, coming into the year, and I shared it with her and, I, and, and she, um, she said, I like it, you know, from a standpoint of it's consistent, it's, you know, all of these things. Um, but she said, but he, is a first, he was a first grader last year. Like, how do I know what materials, if the child is at home, how do I know what materials are going to need? And so that's where it's going to be incumbent upon us to be communicating with you at a more week at a glance. What, what I told our teachers, I begged our teachers, typically at this type of the, time of the year, they're publishing a schedule and giving it to you. FIED here, math here, language arts here. We need to be much more nimble than that. Um, and so we can probably do more a week at a glance, but we didn't want to get so locked in to saying math is going to be every day at this block because then that's not going to provide us with the flexibility that we need to be able to cover all of the outcomes for that grade level. The other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is the Wednesday, um, and that is this, this collaborative time with colleagues as well as families. The majority of the day, will be for connecting with families and doing small groups. We will have some time because in order to make all this work, we do need some collaboration time with colleagues um, and working on curriculum development and, and other things. But the majority of the time after the daily morning, morning meeting is going to be working with families. So what might that look like? One, students that are five days a week distance learning might, might get an extra group on that day, potentially if the teacher and the family feels like that that's what makes sense, potentially. Um, if, a ch if a family is going through a family change, whatever that looks like, or if the child is having a really difficult time, the teacher might say, you know what, let's set, let's set up a virtual meeting or let's set up a meeting um, on, on Wednesday. It also is gonna allow me as the classroom teacher that if I'm seeing that I have a group of kids that's really struggling with whatever concept, I might throw an email out to the parents and say, hey, if at all possible, you know, I'd like to meet with them at X time, right? So it allows us to be much more flexible. I don't want us to think of this as a catch-up day because that's not what the intention of this is. The students may have some longer-term projects to do. They will have some assignments from their teacher, but, but it's going to be much more flexible for us to be able to meet the needs. And so that's where that communication comes into where we know that we need to be communicating with you in a different way than we ever have um, as we're starting off this year. Um, I am almost done talking. Um, I don't know as much about this slide, I'll be completely honest. Um, and I know there was a communication that went out to families yesterday about free meals, um, and that was in the district communicator. And so I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, also, um, if for our tier one critical workers, if uh, you have not yet um, registered, um, please call that. That's our main number. So please call that number. Um, I, uh, I don't have a lot of answers related to child care at this current moment, um, as that is through community education. But when we get to the Q&A portion, I will do it my very best um, to answer th those questions. And then also all of our community education enrichment classes um, after our, after school, because we, as we move to an earlier start, earlier start time and an earlier end time, we wanted to build out our programming. Um, and what, when I say our programming, well, that would be the after school working in collaboration with community ed and potentially some of our teachers offering uh, classes after school too. So that um, is all going to be virtual uh, for the start of the year um, where families can sign up for chess, families can sign up for um, coding. Um, I'm just reading what we have here. Unfortunately, um, um, at this current moment, um, we will not be offering bylay in the fall. And I know that's a, that's a hard pill to swallow for us. Um, 
but the reality of it is with um, with the distancing and everything that we would need to do, as well as the fact that our instructors were Amity interns primarily, and we will not have Amity interns at least in the second semester. Um, and so um, that's a loss. We all felt it at our first staff meeting on Monday, um, not having our eight Amity interns like we normally do, thanks to our parents um, sponsored through our PTO. Um, so uh, Kim is, says she's working on a plan for online drama club. So we'll see where we're at too. You know, I'm still, I know that there are some trials that are being done. I'm still hopeful that there's going, that there's going to be a point in time this year when, when we'll be bringing everybody back to the building, when there's a vaccine, when there's, um, you know, so there are a lot of questions that I'm confident that you have. Um, and there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of uncertainties for everyone as a human being right now, as a parent, um, as well as educators ourselves. First and foremost, our job is and has always been to make your kid feel safe and loved at school and to make them feel secure. And then after that is helping them achieve academically because if we don't build that safe and secure environment, they're not gonna be learning. You know, and so Spanish immersion is our middle. So we added elementary, now so I have to think it's our second and third name, Spanish immersion. So yes, that is extremely important to us. Um, but first priority always has to be student safety and student well-being. Um, and so the, we're, that's what we're going to work on during the first month, first six weeks of school, like it always has been, right? So building those routines, building that stamina and collaborating with you. So I talked way longer than I wanted, but hopefully I answered many of your questions. Uh, Kim and Kara, thank you for monitoring the chat. What What's coming up that we need to, that we should be answering? I would like to address, this is Kim. Um, I would like to address any concerns about uh, students who are doing distance learning, but might not be on site with us. Um, there was a comment about some children being in a community center. Um, what I learned in the spring when we had, when I had students who were in childcare throughout the day, it's going to be really important for the, uh, the childcare workers and then the teacher to be in contact so that, so that the teachers know that the, where the kids are and that the, the childcare workers then can, uh, be in contact with the teacher if they're not sure how to use Seesaw or having questions, making sure that the links, uh, that the student has the links because it won't be the parent's computer necessarily. So in the spring we found that uh, the parent of my student who was in childcare had to make sure that the childcare uh, teacher had the link from me so that he could get on the meeting. So there's some details there that need to be, um, that your childcare provider has to have. Um, the schedule, the link, the teacher's name, just to help facilitate that connection. And I will talk about kindergarten whenever Corey wants me to. Yeah, I think that's a great segue, Kim. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So the kindergarten schedule is going to look a little different, uh, obviously. Um, your children are brand new to uh, PSI and brand new to Spanish in many cases. And we are well aware of that. Well aware of that. And we've... Um, actually done a lot of talking for the last month or so to figure out the best way to make this successful. Uh, next week we'll be meeting with all of the kindergarten families <clears throat> and we're going to give you, you know, some even more details than I'm, gonna give, than I'm going to give you tonight because there'll be details that are specific to each classroom. But in general, each morning there will be a morning meeting and that will be the whole class and we want the students to see each other so that they can get an idea of who's in their class. Um, we know that families will need to be a part of those early meetings. Um, and we hope that, that kindergarten families are able to, to be there, you know, someone, because the kids will need help logging on. We are going to be uh, sending you some videos with instructions for how to do a Zoom meeting, how to do Seesaw, and then once we start doing those live morning meetings, we're going to teach you. Also, we'll answer your questions. Our goal in the first weeks is to make sure that every kindergarten family is comfortable using a Zoom meeting and using Seesaw. So we're going to send you some videos that we're preparing um, to help you with that. Uh, so starting the second week, so September 14th, 
uh, there'll be a morning meeting every morning. And then Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, we will be meeting with your students in small groups. So for instance, <clears throat> um, on each of those days, each day will be the same schedule. Your child would come to a morning meeting, and like I said, it, it might be just 10 or 15 minutes because we know that the Spanish is going to be overwhelming. It always is when we're in school and we are going to see how it works in this online situation. But you'd have a morning meeting and then your child would uh, be scheduled to come to one of probably four groups. So maybe their group would be at 8.30 or maybe their group would be at nine, maybe 10. You will know and we're going to be asking you next week at your conference what schedule works best for you. So we're going to try we're going to try to tailor it to your schedule. Um, but your child, let's say that your child comes to the nine o'clock meeting. There would be six, maybe eight children there, and that will allow us to really give every kindergartner individual attention, start to build some of that vocabulary. We have some activities planned. We've tailored things uh, that we did in school in the, in the building. Uh, we learned a lot in the spring. We used this model. And our goal is, again, to make sure that every family is comfortable using the tools and we'll start building the vocabulary and building the community with the kids. So for the first, first week of conferences, the second two weeks, so September 14th and September 21st, um, those two weeks will look the same each day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, they'll look the same. Um, and your teacher, your child's teacher will give you the specifics on what time your child's meeting will be. And, I, and again, you'll have that discussion next week at conferences. Um, just because I've seen a couple of cases, uh, Kim, uh, we're talking kindergarten specifically right now. This is only kindergarten, only kindergarten. Yes. Um, and so, like I said, our goal is to make sure that every family feels comfortable. We are very open to parents, uh, um, caregivers asking us questions. You know, at, at the beginning or the end of the of the small group sessions, we really um, want to get you as much information as you need to make this be a successful experience. We are committed to making this a positive experience for your children. Um, we know it won't look like kindergarten as we knew it. Your child doesn't know what kindergarten would have been if we were all in the classroom. Um, so we're going to create experience that is positive, that is enriching, and they will learn Spanish. Um, we also will be using Seesaw to um, have them do some assignments at home. We'll send you a video how to use it. And the first two weeks of assignments are all about how to use Seesaw while using some colors, counting to 10, um, the alphabet, writing their name, the same things we'd be doing in school. But we're gonna walk you through it so that they're really comfortable with Seesaw. We also have um, a set of kindergarten websites that are resources for you, and we will share those with you. Uh, those are filled with um, songs, games, lots of music, and then connections to other websites that we find are good for kindergarten. So um, again, our goal is to, to make this as smooth of a transition into kindergarten. Um, as possible, and all four of us um, on the team are very open to answering questions and and helping everyone get off to a good start. Thanks, Kim. And I do want to just shout out to you, Kim, too, because you and your team um, have been working throughout the summer. I know you're being a little kind and said, well, the last month, I know you've been working longer than that. We've been having conversations since last spring, um, as well as you've been meeting with other immersion educators um, from across the Midwest, um, trying to figure out how best to help facilitate kindergarten this fall. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, I, I was glancing at a couple of the questions here. Um, the goal was to have all of this as well as the, um, the information for Meet Your Teacher as a school um, out to you today in a special or a La Prensa edition. Um, it will go out tomorrow. Um, I just, we haven't, I, I w wasn't able to get that done today. Um, and uh, so I, I want to talk some of the specifics related to class sizes right now. Um, and so we will have, we're still enrolling kindergarten. Um, uh, even as of today, um, um, off of the wait list. And 
we're anticipating uh, having 24 students just like every other year um, in kindergarten. Um, our class sizes are, are comparable. Uh, our whole group class sizes are comparable to every other year in first through fifth. Um, the difference will be uh, um, when we get to hybrid, um, you know, in the hybrid model, based on the alphabet. And they all broke actually pretty evenly, kind of, sort of. Um, for whatever reason, third grade can get a lot of people in the second half of the alphabet. Um, so some, you know, some, some of the groups are a little larger on Thursday, Friday than they are on Monday, Tuesday. But right now it's all within, um, within the, the, the scope um, of the amount of students to have in the building and so, or the amount of students to have in the classroom. And um, as a district, um, we're, we are saying that it, in the uh, hybrid model, we will likely have 10 to 16 students per class. 16 would be the cap. Um, and so I saw a question, you know, can people still choose um, uh, distance learning? Yes, absolutely. We want to be flexible with you. And that's the beauty of this model. You're not going to need to have a different classroom teacher. You're not going to, we're keeping the class together. Um, the, um, the, where it might be a little bit more difficult, not impossible, don't hear that, where it might be a little bit more difficult, it's like in that, where I just mentioned that we that we have, like for example, in one class, we have, I think, 18 students in uh, L through Z. And um, there were three families who had indicated distance learning. Um, and so therefore it's 15 when we get to the distance learning portion. Now, if they want um, to come back uh, live uh, uh, or back to the hybrid model, um, we, we, we can make that happen, um, you know, up to 16. It, it just might require having a conversation with the family potentially to moving to the opposite. Uh, you know, if, if my last name is Mazlowski, moving it to the A through K, so the Monday, Tuesday. Um, so, and, and as well as if you want bus transportation, we might have to tweak it a little bit, or you might, it might not have it immediately. So, um, uh, so I just wanted people to know that, that, you know, it's, it's it can be pretty fluid based on our model. Um, but we'll just have to be in communication about that. Um, all right. Another, let's see. Thanks for some of the accolades that I'm seeing. Uh, Kids who can't log on during the day because their parents have jobs and don't log on. Um, yes, classes are also going to be recorded. That is the intention. We believe that we can make that happen. So if a, a family, for whatever reason, can't log on um, at that time, um, that they would be able, the plan is that we'll, we'll access them later on. Um, I know I would say 70% of the emails that I've gotten from parents um, over the last month have been about the hybrid model. And so I'm confident that people here tonight have a lot of questions about that. And like I've told our staff, like we're continuing to work through all of that, but it wouldn't have been right for us as a staff knowing it wouldn't have been the best service to you um, to spend this entire week working on a hybrid model. We want to build those relationships from day one and really start off strong in distance learning. So as we're in distance learning for the next two weeks and three weeks, based on K2 and 3.5, um, before we transition over, the plan will be that staff will be getting additional professional development about what's it going to look like when kids are back um, and have some kids in the classroom. So I, I don't want anyone to think that we don't have plans. We may not, that the teachers may not know all the details of those plans yet because we've been really, really focused on um, getting the year up and running in the distance learning. Um, uh, the afternoon specialist courses in the afternoon required, for example, if I want to flip them and take. Uh, uh, good, good question, Steve, uh, related to specialist classes. You know, um, I think that's part of the reason why we want to build in the live time, too. Um, you know, we'd love it if we, we, we want to make these lessons engaging. They're not necessarily going to be 30 minute lessons. You know, we'd love it if uh, families want to do that. However, I, as a father myself, you know, like I might choose to take my son out and throw the ball. All right, we might run around the block a couple times, uh, 
and uh, until dad gets winded, uh, you know. So um, I, that, you know, as much as we want to offer these opportunities and we want for um, students to be, be participating, um, you know, that's something where we can continue to be in communication on too. But, and we also know that art and, or, I mean, music and Fayed, as well as we're still going to have our artists in residence this year um, working with our kids, you know, that those are really important too. Um, and we know that, that uh, every family has has different needs too. Um, Claire, your question is a is a really good one uh, related to hybrid, and it's one um, that a lot of our teachers have too. We have a plan. We've been trying it out as administrators um, in meetings over the last month. Um, I feel a little goofy sharing some of the details when we haven't talked about it as a staff completely yet. And so um, maybe we'll do another one of these before we go to hybrid, or maybe we'll do some copies with Corey, but know that we'll be giving you more information as we're transitioning into that. Um, it is not evenly divided uh, uh, by grade levels um, completely. Last I checked, um, and that was probably, it was before this week started, um, for students in, in distance learning, it was about 10% um, of our population that um, at that point had opted. But like I say, I know that I'm getting, families are still, um, are still making those decisions. Yeah, uh, good, good question. Um, we, our special education team received information from Minnesota Department of Education late last week and guidance. So um, there, there have been meetings this week through our district and local special education team on how best to support our students during this time. And so they, uh, they being the special ed teachers, our case managers will be reaching out to families with whom they work um, over the course of the next week um, to share uh, what that looks like, and it's going to look a little different based on student need, um, and and what the IEP what the IEP currently says. Um, part of the reason that our case managers will be reaching out to families is because uh, we have to modify the IEPs that have been in existence previously um, because of the because because we're in the middle of the pandemic. Um, so that was part of the direction from that from Minnesota Department of Education. Um, I, I have not read the manual uh, yet uh, from cover to cover, um, but I, I know that our special ed team um, district wide as well as locally that they're, they've got their pulse on it. So it was key to us to send be able to get leveled books from like, yes, um, we believe so. Um, Senora Vandy Walker and I have had that discussion. We've even talked about for when kids are in the building for a hybrid, you know, can we pull the, little red wagon down the hall, you know. Um, we want kids reading, we want to be sharing books, we want to follow um, uh, healthy, healthy, uh, you know, the guidelines that have been offered for us. Um, and we really know the importance of reading. And so that's why we've always historically kept the library open in the summer. That's why we're able to do that this summer. So we are looking at that. We just don't have all the details because um, Senora Vandy Walker being the amazing person she is, um, has been working really hard um, over the last couple of weeks, um, honestly, um, through the technology pieces um, to get both staff as well as families up and running. Um, so that, that's where her focus has been, but we will be uh, doing that. Um, is there a go, no go date to distance learning? There, there's learning longer for the district. So that is going to continue to be looked at every two weeks. We're giving guidance uh, as far as what the, the local numbers are looking like. Um, so currently our plan is we're, we're going uh, hybrid September 28th and October 5th based on the grades. So if that were to change, there would be communication around that, but that is my current belief of where things are at. Um, when and how is this where we made a shift learning um, so sim so similar to that you know we'll, we're going to continue to monitor um, there have been questions that have come up um, about well why uh, you know under the hybrid model you know um, how could we get kids in more um, the the with Spanish immersion in particular, the challenge that we run it well, we'd have to hire staff regardless if we were Spanish immersion or not. We would have to likely bring in additional um, teaching staff, and so that 
is all part of your taxpayer dollars. Um, so we do, we, you know, we could choose to do that. However, we currently are uh, um, operating in a deficit model and not knowing what the future will bring, whatever additional funding we're spending right now um, will be potential budget or could be potential budget cuts in the future, um, you know, related to class size, related to other things. And so um, that, uh, that is something that we'll continue to take a look at. Um, and so we, we knew from families that we needed to give you as much planning as possible. And that, uh, so that was why the decision was made at the board uh, level in September or at the beginning of August to start in distance learning. Um, so from there, um, you know, the one thing in the plan is to start in hybrid. Um, and we'll see where numbers are at, um, you know, um, and that, that would ultimately be a decision larger than, than mine. Um, and FAQ, a lot of these questions, do we have a plan for that? We've been working um, on an FAQ. There was, and there was a district communication that came out also through La Prensa tomorrow. Um, my hope is that some of, the, some of these things uh, will be more clearly articulated as well as in meetings next Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, Parent drop off going to work with so many kids not riding the buses. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I we may end up needing traffic, additional uh, police support. That quite honestly, it worked really slick um, this last year or the first six months we were in our building, um, and so we'll, we're going to have to play that out. Also, knowing in the hybrid model, we would attend, we would only be having up to half of our school coming, um, and so we'll, we're going to have to kind of figure that next step out. Um, but it's definitely on my radar, I promise you that, <laughs> um, as I have heartburn uh, with traffic and that sort of thing. Um, I'm, I'm reading the question about, um, about the health, uh, and, and uh, I know there was some information from a district level which uh, was out there. Um, I can't speak to um, any of the specifics um, um, related to um, the, that plan. I mean, obviously, I know what the plan is, uh, working with uh, in collaboration with our nurses. Um, and so I'm hearing that uh, maybe some more information about that might be beneficial. Um, and we will also have a a room where if students are demonstrating uh, COVID-like symptoms, um, that they would not go in the health office. We have another small, uh, we have another space that we would be supervised until the parent could come back up. Um, so we, we are working on that and recognizing that, you know, that, that yeah, we're recognizing that that is gonna happen, right? Um, And we are not medical professionals ourselves. <laughs> um, I'm not a medical professional, at least. You know, our nurse obviously has a license that I don't, but. Uh, will Paris be in the classroom per usual? Yes, so yes and. Um, the plan will be for the first week or um, so next week, our kindergarten paraprofessionals will have some additional responsibilities, also potentially helping with um, emergency childcare, um, as well as helping with tours in the building um, for our kindergarten families next week. Um, so uh, finalizing some of those details, the plan will be that they will primarily, uh, and then uh, during the first couple of weeks, um, likely working with the younger grades, um, and then transitioning back to our kindergarten paraprofessionals working in kindergarten. Uh, confusion about uh, privacy issues. Um, we uh, recently as a district pivoted to uh, purchasing the institutional membership to Zoom. And so I know there are some, uh, part of the reason why we didn't go to Zoom last year was due to um, some of the guidelines. The, the subscription that we bought does meet those guidelines. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna have to get back on, um, on some of the, the data privacy. Um, uh, things I know what we did last spring related to that, um, but um, we'll have to figure out some of those pieces. Uh, 
All right, Kara, Kim, what, what did I forget? I think you covered everything we talked about. Yeah, I think so. Um, someone just asked about Zoom. Yes, we are using Zoom instead of Google Meets. We're all learning this week. <laughs> Were there COVID cases? My belief is that there were. Um, I don't have this, I, I, and I only know that through what I heard. I don't supervise uh, the Kids Place programs. I don't have specifics around that um, or the data privacy around that either. I, I just honestly don't know. Um, Yep, we're, and we're, we're going to continue to follow the guidance from that. Corey, do you want to address uh, Jay's question about gym and music? Yep. Um, so synchronous, uh, we will be having the uh, Chris and Jack um, will be working with the kids live. Um, at this point, the plan is at, at least once every other week live. Um, the Knowing that we are going to be pushing into English in the morning, um that's that's why that's where that's where that is at as well as though we will be doing asynchronous or on-demand lessons we're also looking at some other possibilities but i don't want to get too far ahead i would rather under promise and over deliver to you um, um and so um more will be coming out about that as we're working through that two of our staff members um who work uh, with us and Kids Place will be um, that will be working their time at Kids Place. We're also looking at how we could potentially support using some of our Spanish speakers to at least for part uh, to have check-ins um, um, to, to help log in and that sort of thing in Spanish. I think I would like to add to, to that question about Kids Place. Um, as teachers, we see the Kids Place staff all the time, and so we can communicate with them back and forth about who might need extra help here or if they have questions about an activity or a lesson that we send. Um, so there, there's a good relationship between the Kids Place staff and the PSI teaching staff. So that's that's easy for us to, to collaborate and, and uh, help each other and help the kids. All right, well, um, we're a little bit beyond time, but I, I do thank you for your questions. Um, uh, know that we are in this together. We, we really, really uh, value the partnership. Um, we hopefully, um, for those of you that were with us last spring, hopefully you see some of your um, suggestions and recommendations built into um, the way that the, the day will be structured. Um, so I, I thank you for that. I also uh, would kindly ask that you uh, send good thoughts um, our staff's way, you know, as we're um, doing this uncharted territory with you and just like you uh, too. Um, you know, we, we really need and want to be in partnership. Well, uh, Katie, I see one, one more question. Uh, will, Katie, will teachers be teaching from home or at PSI? Um, initially, they will have the option over the next uh, uh, couple of weeks with the knowledge that they need to be comfortable with um, the tools within their classroom. So when we bring students back live, that everything hopefully goes as smoothly as it can, recognizing that there will be technology issues. Mm -hmm. um, that, that there are very few constants in life, but I believe that that is one of them, is that technology isn't always our friend. Um, so. um, Gracias uh, to all of you. Um, we can't wait to see kids and uh, looking forward um, to our continued partnership. Don't hesitate to reach out. If I don't get back to you immediately uh, via email, and if you do need a more immediate response, please call our office. Um, thanks, everybody. Have a great night.
Uh, Kilmer Carr, I'm not sure which one of you uh, started the re uh, recording. Um, would you be willing to set it off? All right, thank you, Kim. All right, it was Kara. She she did the recording. All right. I think she may have had to jump off. I think she didn't. It's still recording. <laughs> um, I can stop it. Can you? I, well, I, yeah. I can lie. How, 